Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you. Rise of India linked with rise of technology, says India's foreign minister at Global Tech Summit. Political drama heats up in Pakistan as PTI decides to resign from assemblies. And Pakistan's junior foreign minister visits Kabul as Taliban offshoot ends ceasefire. And now for all the details, Indian Foreign Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar on Tuesday termed data as the new oil in current times. Jay Shankar, who was speaking during the inaugural address of the Global Technology Summit in capital New Delhi, went on to say that the rise of India is linked to the rise in technology. India's Foreign Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar on Tuesday termed data as the new oil as he addressed the new inaugural session of the 7th edition of the Global Technology Summit in New Delhi. The Foreign Minister underscored the importance of technology in geopolitics and the new world order. While commenting on European global system, he added that Westphalian model of international relation is over. He further said the rise of India is linked to rise in technology. Terming globalization as the heart of geopolitics, he added that the right argument concerning globalization should be are you part of collaborative globalization or part of a globalization dominated by few players. Uh, for us in this era of technological interpenetration, to say that you know uh, all states are equal, everybody is a black box and it doesn't matter what happens inside that black box, it does matter what happens inside the black box. I think we people, especially in India in the last two years, two and a half years, have woken up to the fact, where does our data reside? Who processes, who harvests our data? What do they do with it? I think that's a very, very uh, key question. Jay Shankar said that everything is weaponized and added if India needs to grow, it needs to look where India's interest is and who are partners providing access to technology. The three-day-long Global Tech Summit is India's annual flagship event on geotechnology and is co-hosted by Foreign Ministry and the Carnage India. And moving on, a thick smog continued to engulf India's capital New Delhi on Tuesday as air pollution worsened with the setting in of winter, shooting up concentrations of fine particles in the air three times above the acceptable limits. Thick smog engulfed India's capital New Delhi on Tuesday as air pollution worsened with the setting in of winter, shooting up concentrations of fine particles in the air three times above the acceptable limits. AQI, the air quality index in parts of the city, shot up above 400 on Tuesday, which is classified as the severe category of air pollution, according to the Central Pollution Control Board. The world's most polluted capital city struggles to breathe easy every winter as cold temperatures and calm winds trap pollutants closer to the ground. Authorities have brought in several measures over the years to improve the city's air quality, including switching Delhi's fleet of public transport to cleaner fuel, spraying water on roads and controlling burning of firewood and waste. But experts have said that these measures need to be applied across cities and towns around New Delhi which also suffer from poor air quality to effectively control pollution. 
Well, in news from Pakistan, following the announcement by PTI Chairman Imran Khan to quit from all assemblies across Pakistan, the party has formally approved the dissolution of assemblies in Punjab and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. The opposition members in PTI-ruled provinces are now looking at options to block the move by Khan's party. Following the announcement of opposition PTI Chairman Imran Khan to resign from assemblies across Pakistan, PTI Senior Vice President and Khan's close aide Fawad Chaudhry on Monday said the party has approved the dissolution of assemblies in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Punjab where it is in power. Chaudhry added members will also tender their resignation from Sindh and Balochistan provinces. Once PTI members resign from their respective assemblies, 563 seats across the country will be vacated, with the law mandating fresh elections. This in line with the demand of snap polls by Imran Khan, who is conducting an anti-government long march since May 2022. the ये असेंबलियां तहलील कर दी जाएंगी उसके बाद जो सिंध और बलूचिस्तान से हमारे तमाम अरकान जो हैं वो अपने इस्तीफे जमा करा रहेंगे और एक बार फिर हम स्पीकर قومی اسمبلی को भी अप्रोच कर रहे हैं और हम उनसे कह रहे हैं कि हमारे जो एमएनएस के रेजिग्नेशंस हैं जो अब तक आपने एक्सेप्ट नहीं किए वो भी एक्सेप्ट जो हैं वो किए जाएं Opposition parties in Punjab and Balochistan have been, however, looking at all constitutional and legal options to block the dissolution of assemblies. Leaders of JUIF, ANP, PMLN and Pakistan's People Party met with Khyber Pakhtunkhwa's opposition leader Akram Khan Durani to discuss the strategy against PTI's move. The ruling federal coalition had earlier rejected demands for snap polls, saying the elections will be held as scheduled later next year. Moving on, a judge at a UK court wondered which faction of the Mutahida Kwami movement was the real party as the trial in the case filed by MQM Pakistan to snatch seven expensive London properties from MQM founder Altaf Hussain began on Monday. Hussain condemned the move and said he will leave it to the Muhajir community to decide over the actions of the breakaway faction. A judge at the UK High Court wondered which Mutahida Qaumi movement or MQM was the real party. As trial opened in London brought by breakaway MQM Pakistan or MQMP against party founder and leader Altaf Hussain in order to snatch from him seven expensive London properties. The MQM Pakistan has claimed in the court that once removed from the membership and de facto leadership in 2016, Hussain set up a new splinter group called MQM London, which is not a registered political party in Pakistan. Hussain condemned the move and said he had left it to the Muhajir community, which the party represents, to give a judgment on the actions of MQM Pakistan. This is the same as the people who are in the same way. जो साबित कदम और पक्के नजरियाती होते हैं, वो मायूस नहीं होते हैं, और वो साबित कदम रहते हैं, वो साबित कदम रहते हैं, और वो अपने मिशन पर डटे रहते हैं। Hussain said Muhajir community will boycott MQMP again in the upcoming general elections to express their anger at them. The MQM has dominated Pakistan's largest city, Karachi, since the 1980s. When security forces cracked down on the party in the 1990s, Altaf Hussain sought asylum in the United Kingdom. But the leader has remained vocal about political developments in the country. And in news from Afghanistan, Pakistan's junior foreign minister, Hina Rabbani Khar, on Tuesday visited Afghanistan and held talks with the Taliban regime in Kabul days after border clashes between the two sides. The visit also came a day after a local offshoot of the militant group ended a ceasefire with the Pakistan government and announced a resumption of attacks. 
Pakistan State Minister for Foreign Affairs Hina Rabani Khar held talks with the Taliban regime as she visited Afghan capital Kabul on Tuesday, days after border clashes between the two sides. During her meeting with the Taliban-led interim government's foreign minister Amir Khan Muttaki, both the leaders discussed a range of bilateral issues, including cooperation in education, health, trade and investment, regional connectivity and socio-economic projects, a statement from Pakistan's foreign office said. Khar also held talks with Taliban Deputy PM Abdul Salam Hanafi and the Women Chamber of Commerce to enhance cooperation. The bilateral engagements by a Pakistani minister comes as no country has so far recognized the Taliban regime, mainly over the issue of rights of women. The Pakistani minister's visit also came a day after a local offshoot of the militant group ended a ceasefire with the government in Islamabad and announced a resumption of attacks across the country. The Afghan Taliban had been facilitating peace talks between the two sides since late last year. Moving on to news from Nepal, as the FIFA World Cup fever has taken over fans across the world, Nepali workers who were involved in construction work in Qatar have recalled their experiences of working in the Gulf. They said facilities they were promised to them at the time of the recruitment were not fulfilled and they were not paid well. As FIFA World Cup takes over the world, Nepali workers who were involved in the construction in Qatar recall their experience of working in the Middle Eastern nation. Sitting in his home in Kathmandu, Hari Bahadur Shrestha was seen watching on TV a football match in Qatar, a country where he worked for three years as a painter. Immediately after, it won the bid to host the latest edition of the World Cup. He emphasized when he used to work, he was not provided with any safety gear except for a jumpsuit and a helmet and he had to paint the walls taking support of metal beams erected around. Shrestha said the facilities that were promised to him and other workers at the time of recruitment were not fulfilled at all and they were even paid less. They were Subhidata, they are Sabe Camro Matre Company, Sabe Company, Testeotio, Kinegava Tianze, Molepani is Banivella, the Abada, Zanuela, Barasi, and Elegagatio. Taramago is a person, Molano, Madre de Raji, Abatama, Bidravani, Bidravani, Garna, Surugare, Taramalaze, our company, Tona Potidin Zuma, Banikura, Saman Garegatio. A report named Vital Signs Death of Migrants in the Gulf mentions that as many as 10,000 migrant workers from South and Southeast Asia lose their lives in six countries in the Gulf every year. The reasons include abusive working conditions and hypertension. The Nepali migrant workers have long said they have really worked hard for the development of Qatar, but they feel exploited. Well, the ancient craft of weaving patola saris dates back to the 11th century and a family in Western India has been carrying on the legacy of the craft work for generations. Have a look. An artisan family, the Salves in Patan district in India's western Gujarat state, has been keeping the 900-year-old heritage of making patola saris alive as they use hand looms to weave tight threads to make uniquely patterned yards of silk. What started in the 11th century when at least 700 weaver families migrated from the western Maharashtra state to Patan is now bestowed upon the lone surviving family of weavers. A genuine Patola sari with the salves started from nearly 1224 US dollars and can cost up to $7,343 depending on the intricacies. Puri sari ke tana aur bana dono ko itni ginti se alag alag kar se dye karte kyun jab bunai karte तो बस दोनों का क्रॉस मैच होकर डिजाइन तैयार होती है इतना गिनती से कलर किया है दूसरे कपड़े में क्या होता है कपड़ा बुनाई करने के बाद छपाए काम होता है यहां पहले धागे डाई करते हैं बाद में बुनाई करते हैं तो ये पूरा रिवर्स प्रोसेस है और ये खोदने का मेन कहां क्या कि हजारों साल पहले जिस जमाने में दुनिया में डिजाइन वाला कपड़ा निकालने का कोई तरीका खोजा गया नहीं था उस टाइम से पैटर्न में ये काम चल रहा है एक्सप्लेनिंग फर्दर Sal family said on average four to five colors are used on the sari and the time to prepare a sari depends upon the number of colors and the intricacy of the designs. 
The family make patola saris on an order basis and is far away from looking at exporting opportunities even though they get orders from Indians abroad who take a lot of interest in the patola handloom. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.